Welcome to Comfort Africa number two. We are starting Instagram and we are starting TikTok. And if we're lucky, they'll work. Okay, Instagram is a go, TikTok is a go. Okay, everybody, before we do anything, I am doing a martial art training video. It's pretty much the same old stuff that you've seen me do before because it will never get old. No, I'm kidding. I am going to do some different stuff at some point at some time. I just don't feel like going to that shed to pull out extra weapons. So we will be doing nunchucks, we will do the yellow chain, we will do the commas, use our imagination to turn them into topless, and we'll do short sticks in any specific order, but since the nunchucks are in hand, we're gonna use nunchucks first. We have a Father's Day thing. Not my father, he's ashes, but uh, the church is kind of in what I used to be calling my normal training zone. So we're just gonna go right here and hopefully you guys might get a laugh. I might drop a nunchuck or something, you know, the, the shit that normally happens when you train. And in, in for a sec, all right? So I'm gonna say this without question, without remorse. Um, I do believe in weapon training. I don't believe in using weapons in actual combat. The reason is really quite simple. You've seen me train and you've seen these damn things fly out of my hand. You cannot afford to have that happen in a real fight. And the only weapons you should only have to use are these, fists, forearms, elbows, knees, and toes. That's it. Those are your weapons. Those are your primary weapons in a fight, in a real fight, because those are the things you're going to walk around with. You're not going to walk around with a pair of nunchucks all day. Your name is not Michelangelo, Raphael, Donatello, or Leonardo. It's also probably illegal in your city and state. So training in your backyard, training in the park. You're safer training in your backyard. Training in the park will draw a crowd and also probably the police. Somebody might not like the fact you're walking around with a katana or any kind of sharp instrument. All my weapons that you will be seeing are training tools. Henceforth though, in the right hands, any training tool can actually be considered a weapon depending on who you are and how long you've been doing martial arts. I do not support the belt system because I have beaten black belts and I don't have one. All right, so just understand that the belt system is a system of control and the only time belts really matter is if that's your profession. If you're a professional wrestler or a professional fighter, that's the only time those belts really count. If you're a professional athlete doing Taekwondo and you get an Olympic medal, that's about the only time those belts really count. You're probably not going to like the fact that I said that, but hey, I'm going to give you 99.9. .9. It's up to you to believe what you want, take with it from what you want, and then get to work. All right? So, nunchucks. Understand you have a couple striking patterns. Cross, cross, up from down, and up from down. Yeah, because that's up and down, that's down and up. Same goddamn concept, you're just coming up, coming up. All right? And I will say this, because in actual fights, you probably won't get the time to do this shit. So don't think it's gonna work like in the movies. In the movies, if you have these in your hands, swing until you can, or until they break, or until they fly off, you know? Boom, 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 you know? But nine times out of 10, if you're hitting somebody with nunchucks, you won't need to kick them. Boom, that should probably do. You know? You're not gonna do fancy shit. You're not gonna be the winners. You're not gonna get the chance. Training at home like this, fine. You pull these things out in the street, you better mean business. And you better give them the business. The fancy, fancy shit? Nah. Your primary strikes. Boom, 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 boom. Yeah. And remember, your distance is your safety line. So, if they're falling out, wham! Yeah, this is for control, because I'm closer. If they're further out, boom, now I have distance. I have more distance than I have control. So your job is to be able to do both. You have the distance and the control. And it's 6.30 and one of my alarms went off. Okay, short sticks. Hello, short sticks. As always, this is a wooden, this is training. Still hurt yourself with training tools, so please be forewarned. You will never do this in a fight. It's not going to happen. Your opponent's not going to give you the time. 
I understand that. So you're gonna go with the blocks. Boom, boom, versus boom. That's not gonna happen. That's why. You're gonna block, boom, boom, boom. Keep striking. Do not stop, pull back, work it around. This shit, that's why. The guys coming at you, boom, bam, boom. You're not gonna stop. That's what you're gonna do. Block, strike, 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 strike. Block, block, block. Now for your blocks, I call it the windshield wiper. This way, this way, or you can do the single wiper. Boom, and we're gonna block and turn into that damn thing. So you also can protect most of your body. And the same thing this side. And the reason for if they're coming down, if this is the closest one, that's the one you're gonna use. So you block here, boom, strike out. Block here, strike out. And the reason why you want to do that is because you don't want to be hit. These things are going to hurt you. And people are swinging with the force of a baseball, which means they're probably going to be swinging at a lot of pounds of pressure. And I'm a little guy. So if I got these in my hand, you better not have nothing in yours. My job is to make sure that you are unarmed by force or by force. And again, that's for training at home. This here, at home, fine. You walk down the street with your chobos, your chobos do not work. Understand, not movie shit, real life. Your chobos do not twirl. Is that a guest? I don't know if that's gonna work. I just let a guest up. So hopefully, you're a martial artist. And you should know that you're being recorded, so you picked the wrong show to come on. But feel free to say hi. I'm not really taking yes and stopping because I don't have a lot of time. But anyway, if you're walking down the street and you start doing this, you're going to get hurt. You walk down the street and you're going to fight with these chobos, you are going to fight with the chobos. So here's your T-block. So your T-block is for outside. You're coming this way. Boom. Push off. Boom. Slap. Boom. Slap. This one takes too long. If you're coming under, it takes too long. So when you push off, doom, that's the closest to your target. So you pushed off, boom. It's not, boom, let me whirl this thing, and then clock, no, hell no. Block, boom, bam, that's the closest strike. Yeah, if it's on the other way, boom, bam. You know, a lot of people are right-handed versus left-handed. So when you block it, push off, and strike again. Whoever I just missed, I am sorry. Boom, boom, you know, that's not this, okay? Boom, boom, boom is a hell of a lot better than boom, pull it out, roll it around, and do that. That's going to get your shit fucked up. You don't want to do that. So block, strike, boom. Yo, know, block, block, boom. If at all possible, do a different kick than that. You want to try to keep your feet on the ground. So block, block, boom. Yeah, you want to kind of keep it as simple as possible. Because if you go in the fancy shit, you're probably going to get your shit fucked up. So if I'm moving fast, time is not on my side. Commas. And we're still going to use these as simulated toppers, but for now they're commas. Rule number one. Lock, strike, strike, strike. Never stop striking because these are supposed to be blades. What you're not going to do is block, strike, pull it out, whip it around, and strike. Save that shit for the movies. I actually did that without dropping it. Wasn't that amazing? So again, block, strike, strike. Keep striking. Not block, strike, pull it out, and whip it around. No. You're going to keep that shit real. These are for cutting and gutting. Mostly for gutting, then cutting. Because you have to cut through the armor, peel it off, and then go back. Alright? You're also Japanese. So, block, boom, boom. Boom, boom. Now notice, my block's not moving. Because there should be an enemy sword there. Now what I could do, if I want to prolong the fight, or in my case, be stupid. Block, strike, boom. Now there's a good chance that I don't have enough long leg room to do that. Or the guy's stronger. The guy's stronger and I'm down here, crack, take out a knee. You have to remember that armor has certain spots that didn't have a lot of protection. The knees is one of those spots because 
it's easier to cut open where the, the, the knee has to bend. You're wearing armor. So you don't want to walk around like this, like you have a stick up your ass. You want to be able to bend. So the armor is weakness, knees and elbows. So here I blocked. He's pushing me down because he's stronger. He's much stronger. His brain's pushing me down. Crap! I'm taken out of a kneecap. I'm going to try to take the knee off of his body. And these things are hooked in real life. So not like this hook. It's like literally a hook, like a little sickle. So whew, I'm coming through that damn thing because the armor doesn't have any protection at the knees. You have to move. A lot of people who are teaching you samurai will tell you you have to go for the joints. If you go for the joints, it's a whole lot easier to do more damage to a person by going for the joints. Same thing I would teach anybody if they're going to fight someone and you don't have a lot of upper body strength. If you break a person's elbow, their hand don't function like it used to. Uh, I don't know if I can do this on camera, so we'll, we'll, we'll try it. All right, so you guys can see that. Can you see that? See all this move when I move my fingers? Hold on. The lighting's totally fucking this up. But, uh, you see. Okay, you see that? YouTube, you can see it. Instagram, you can see it. TikTok, you saw it. So, you see that? When you break that elbow... That's pretty much the, the thing that focuses on that. So yes, I probably shouldn't be teaching you that, but yes, I've done it. Now we're gonna transfer these into tampas instead of counts. Again, I'm an outside to inside guy, so I prefer to swing from the outside versus the inside. The reason is that from this angle, if I don't clear, I'm hitting myself in the ribs, go too high, I hit the right rib, Black, I'm going over. If I'm going for an upper strike, it's a good chance that I can catch my chin. I'm guarding, but if I don't hit right, I'm going to catch my chin. I don't have to get knocked out by my opponent because I did it myself. If I got a glass jaw, wham, yeah, I come up that something's good. It's a done deal. So that's why I always go from the outside. From the outside, outside. So you guys can see. Boom. I go outside. Now, I can do it from the inside. I don't like it. I'm not comfortable with it. I'm also afraid that I never get cleared of my ribs. But boom. But see, now I have to look at how my leg is positioned. So if I do this, when somebody's coming in for a kick, boom. If I don't get clear, I'm going to hurt myself. Not to mention, I blocked the kick. He still has two legs and two hands that probably can be used as an option. What if he fakes me and I go for the kick that's not there? I've lowered my guard. My best reaction from here, because I've lowered my guard for a kick that does not exist, because he went through this, he pulls back, he doesn't kick me. So I'm this. All of this is exposed. So my best shot is to come around. Because if I come this way, I can hurt myself. You, know, you gotta know your weapon. You gotta know how to use it. And yes, these are commas, not topless, but they can be used as topless today by the power of my imagination and Daniel Tiger and Mr. Rogers neighbor, because nobody ever explained to me why Mr. Rogers always leaves his house at the end of the show, if that's his house in his neighborhood. Make it make sense. Anyway, I'm 50, so that's why it never made sense to me then. It still doesn't make sense to me now, because no one's ever explained it. But anyway, so guys throwing a jab, all right? I can block it, block it. If I block it this way, I strike this way. If I block it this way, I can strike this way, but I'm not one of those people. If I block it, boom. I'm Striking with the opposite hand. Why? Because one is going to be a little bit more momentum. Boom, boom. And they're going to be like a simultaneous. You know, I batted it off and I struck. This isn't going to work. Okay? It might work for y'all. If you're the inside to outside people, you know, you got to bring it in. You're a way better martial artist than me. Or you just have uh, a whole lot of, I'm used to it this way. I'm used to it this way. If you're used to it that way, there's nothing wrong with it. I'm used to it this way. And I would never tell anybody to switch up how they fight like Tompa. Just understand, you don't want to Tompa yourself in the process, boom. So if you're blocking, boom, boom, you know, boom. Come around, boom, come around. That's not going to work for me because it had to come up. If I missed or miscalculated a small fraction of a second, clock. If I have a glass jaw, 
I'm going to sleep. All right? Guy standing over me, he's probably going to give me no mercy whatsoever. Good news is, I ain't going to feel a thing until I wake up. The bad news is, I might not wake up. So you have to be careful at how you explain shit and how you do shit. Because in the battlefield, it's all or nothing. And you're fighting someone who may or may not have weapons. If they don't have weapons and you have a top, you're in pretty good shape. Because you have distance. Boom. And they come at you, kick them. Boom. You know? Boom. Boom. Okay. Something I neglected to say, so I better say it now. Nine times out of ten, because toppers are thicker than this, if I kicked you to keep you at the distance, or just enough so that I can rock you with this topper, I'm probably not going to need to kick you anymore. Alright? To be merciful and to be honest, if you get hit with a topper, um, it's going to hurt. It's going to hurt like shit. And you're probably going to sleep or something's going to get broken. If you're throwing a front kick, and I jam that topper down on your kneecap, you're done. Because if I'm lucky, I don't have to do this to finish it. Because you would be like people and you'd be hurt. From you grabbing here and I just step in, boom. I probably shouldn't do that, being that I hurt your leg when you went for a kick with the Tampa, but it's a fight. Alright? I understand in a fight, the rules only count in the dojo. The rules only count in the dojo or a sporting event. Out here in the real world, out in the streets, no one's going to give a shit. No one cares if you're a black belt. No one cares if you think you are a UFC champion, but you ain't never been in an actual fight. No one cares. They don't. I got Tompas. If I'm fighting you with Tompas, I'm more than likely looking at a possibility of doing time. You know, and the reason why is if you're unarmed, I'm screwed. You know, if you got like a staff or a stick or some shit, um, you got range. And in that event, I'm the one with the problem. Because Tompas are short range combat instruments. If you're not careful, you got a staff. Boom. I got a block. Boom. I have to match that movement with every strike you swing of your bow staff. One second. I can't give you a full on demonstration. This is the average size of that staff. Alright? So, you right here. And you're coming down. And you're coming down. And I got this top. I have two of them, but because I only have my hand. Boom. If I push that bitch off and jab you, it's going to stop there. Because it's the only thing I can afford to move right now. Because you're going to bring that stick right the fuck back. So, I pushed off and jab you. If I don't do something else immediately, it's not going to take much for you to boom, boom. And if I'm not capable of blocking that shit with these tampas, I'm going to sleep or the hospital or both. You got to understand, when you're blocking with short range weapons, you are the one in the game. The only shorter range weapon that's shorter than a tampa and commas are the side. And so... You're not really trying to fight with those sides, you are not Raphael. So you want to make sure that if you block, he's coming down with a stick. Boom. He's coming down so I can stop here and strike, which would be the probably best option. So he's blocking. Boom. You know, because I'm holding his stick. He's going to have to do something to avoid my other time. He's coming down. Boom. Boom. Now, if I hit him in the ribs, he's probably going to slide back a little bit, which is what I'm banking on. If he slides back, I'm going for another strike with the top of the head to stick on it. Because he clacked up here, I strike in the gut, he goes down, boom. I have him just far enough that I can get in. Now remember, you're fighting with Tompas. They're not that big. They're thicker than this, though. But they also should go up about two more inches and just right where it is right here at your elbow. But a Tompa is really thick. So it looks more like one of these. It would be that thick around your arm. It is for shielding your arm. I don't know if anybody's ever fought with a sword and a tampa. 
It may have been in history of Asia, but uh, as far as I know, I don't. So there's that. But you're fighting with a tapa, so you're blocking, boom. Or you're blocking, boom. And you see how my body is shaped? You know, the position I'm in, this is safer. But in, in, in a fight, you don't have time to worry about that because fights happen in a matter of seconds. And you can block and do this, but if you don't clear, you're gonna get clear. So you have to understand how fights actually work. Yeah, you're fighting with a, a fucking, it's basically sticks with fucking handles on it. So, boom, that works for me. This might work for you. But as you see, I have to focus when I'm looking at y'all to make sure that I don't hit my body with this goddamn stick. Because you're gonna put power behind it. Boom, bam, see that? I get caught right here. This guy over here is gonna beat my ass. So now I gotta watch any questions. He's gonna beat my ass. You have to understand how fights work. You really do. You have to understand how momentum works. You also have to understand that a thousand things can go wrong in a fight before one thing goes right. So you have to understand how fights work. So I'm blocking, boom. This works for me because it's coming from the outside, all right? This doesn't work for me because I have to worry about two things. You see how it's grazing across me? I have to worry about getting clear without breaking my rib at a maximum of 40 something seconds because dude's not swinging slow and he's putting power behind that damn stick. So if he's coming down, boom, if I don't get this bitch clear, I'm in trouble. Now I can block and do this, but then I open myself up to get hit. So I don't want to remove the stick that's blocked. You know, boom. I want to use the stick that's not blocked because that's a safer bet. And it's better than me um, trying to do this or this and then this. No, that's not going to work. I need this stick to stay here because it's the block. If I'm blocking, that's going to work. That should hit him hard enough to make him get back. If he can get back, I can move in. Fighting, counterfighting. You have to be able to do them both at roughly the same time. Okay, we're going to move on to the yellow chain. Don't worry, this won't take long. Then we're going to do the hands bound stuff. And then we're going to call it a day. Plus, I need water. So make sure you drink and stay hydrated. So, when fighting with chains, or if you do meteor hammer or rope dart, you know, I'm not good at it, but I can do this. Learning how to stop your weapon is rule number one. Or, go to sleep. No. I don't really recommend the neck because you could choke yourself out. But if you're in like, combat, you're not gonna have time to worry about that. So, if they can get through all of this, I deserve to get beat up. But, I'm doing this, and then here, and there, bring it back. You know, and if you see how my body, I try to absorb it. You don't wanna have it too fast. And if you have a meteor hammer, you really don't want to take it in the ribs. You have a rope dart, you don't want to take it in the ribs. So you want to slow it down. You know, I go with it. A lot of people don't do that, but I'm old as shit. <laughs> so if this thing's coming this way, and I stop it, and I go with it. See, I caught me in the thigh. And a better chance of not hurting myself by catching it in the fatty parts of your body. You know. Now that's something you don't really want to have happen. Yes, it'll hurt like shit. So here, that's an attack, that's an attack. That's an attack. Stop it, that's an attack. Ah, that's a fuck up, but I still recovered. Ah, old age. Now, since I got range, it's more than likely I won't need my foot for anything. Let's keep swinging this bitch. Then you gotta think about it. It's long enough that I can get there. But um, 
I don't know if y'all can see this. Things like 12 feet. Yeah, so if you can see that. I know YouTube's not gonna be able to see this. See, can y'all see that shit? I can't see if y'all can see it because the the comments. But um, this is pin number one. So yeah, don't do that. But it's in half, so you have branch. I gotta be able to catch. It hit the tank. Yeah. Stuck myself in the eye. Hurt like shit. But the show must go on. Now I'll stop hurting in about like 30 seconds. And if I have a black eye, y'all saw that shit on live. So, short range. Shorter range, so you can strike, boom, boom, and, uh, here, here, send it. Uh, again, save that shit for the movies. But learning how to stop it, always learn how to stop it. Or, as you saw what happened in my eye, it can happen to you. So you gotta be real careful messing with any kind of training instrument of any way, shape, or form. Just to take a couple of seconds. We're almost done. And thanks for the wave, brother. I'm also on uh, TikTok at the same time. Shout out to SSV Spectacular, AKA Transformers Talk. And y'all should go follow him on Instagram and TikTok. And if you don't, I'll be coming for you. Also, drink water. But don't drink all of it while you're training. It's periodically. Okay, last thing for the night. So I can get out of your faces and y'all can have a great night. Bound fighting. Is it something that they barely teach these days? If at all? It's like more popular 70s, 80s. Just so that people can understand that. Um, I was taught this when I was 12. <laughs> Just a long goddamn time ago. The the reason why you want to learn bound fighting is so that you can escape if your hands tie. We're gonna do behind the back first. These are the kicks you are not going to do. Ready? Reverse tornado. Your balance will be off. Regular tornado. Your balance will be off. Your balance will be off. When your hands are behind your back, your balance is outweighed to the back. So what you're gonna do is, you're gonna learn how to escape with your hands tied behind your back. We always do that first, because it's easy to fight with your hands tied in front of you, providing that you have training, than it is to fight with your hands behind your back. So, behind the back, understand your range of motion. This is your range of motion in front, this is my range of motion in the back. See how high that is? That's right. In American air. So, I have limited ability to protect my fucking head. Alright? That's why you learn from the back first. Alright. So, before we get into it. I'm probably going to get my words mixed up. Inside to outside crescent kick. Outside to inside crescent kick. Those are your main focuses for escape because they'll be a lot easier to do outside of a front push kick. All right? Again, 
Outside to inside. Boom. Inside to outside. Boom. So in doing that, you're going to be able to understand those four kicks, two from the left, two from the right. You're going to need to know your escape vector. So if your door is on the left, you want to use your right leg outside to inside. Excuse me, your left leg, because your door is on your left as well. I was pointing, but I said you're right. Sorry about that. Your door is on your left. You want to kick him to your right. So he's in front of you. He's not at the door, but he knows the door is there. So outside to inside. Boom. Now to show you what it looks like with your hands tied. So he's coming. I have a, no means of blocking, really, because my arms are short. And so are my legs. So I'm not boxing with God today. So he's coming. My door's over there, I use the other leg. But for now, my door's over there. I need to stop confusing y'all. I'm gonna use my left leg, outside to inside, putting my enemy to my right. Why? Because my door's to my left. And I can't fight from here. I wanna be able to get the fuck out of Dodge with little to no injury to me and barely having to engage this fucker. So he's coming at me, boom! All right, pop my hips, I'm out. Now, in the event that you fuck up, you'll have to engage it. So let's say my door is still over there, and I fuck up and do either one of these two kicks, and inside to outside with the left, which is the biggest fuck up, because it puts him right there. Now, boom! Now he's between me and my door. Inside to outside with my right, or outside to inside, rather. Boom! I put him in my traveling path. You don't want to ever put your enemy in your traveling path. You want that sound, bitch? Fucking deer shit or dog shit. Fantastic. Good thing I didn't run that way. That would have been bad. You don't want to put um, your enemy in the path of your escape. Which is, again, why you're not going to do this. Okay? Don't do that. You'll get fucked up. And also, if I go down, somebody post that. Because <laughs> you don't want to do this. You see how my balance is off? When you go back and watch it and see it the first time when my hands are not tied, you'll see that my balance is up. That's why I did that, just to prove a point. Now, door's over there. It's coming. I want him to go in that direction, outside to inside with my right leg to his face. Boom! I landed exactly the way I needed to, to go to the door. Inside to outside with my left foot to send him to my left. Inside to outside. Boom! He's going that way. I'm going this way. The reason I'm going that way is because the door's over there and my hands are tied. I may not be a good fighter. This is not the time to find out. The time to find out is when my hands are not tied or when you're tied in front of me. But as long as your hands are behind your back and your range of motion is good, because if you can see my left leg is a leg that I had my hip replacement on at 42, it still functions. It's just the range of motion is deterred by about 35%. So another um, thing that you should probably also consider would just be a basic front kick. He's running at you, boom! So you wanna go right center mass, take a drink of water when y'all done. Where that water stops, that's your target. Why is that your target? Because that's your air. If you can't breathe, you can't hurt me. So if you're coming at me and the only leg that's available is this leg because it's gonna be the power kick versus a soft push kick. A soft push kick might just set him back a little bit. I want to bring him down and keep him down. He's coming at me, boom! Now I'm going this way towards that pile of dog shit. And my alarm's going off. Both of them. Long live the gargoyles. So you have to understand how these things are gonna work. First, your main target on your opponent is going to be a sternum unless you know you can get him in the face. I'm short, I know I can get him in the face. But in the event that I can't get him in the face due to this leg's malfunctioning ability, boom! Now you don't want to do this. Boom! Because he can stop short. He can sweep your foot. So you want to keep your feet on the ground as much as possible until that last possible second. Boom! No. Now the leg that has the power will be the one that's coming from the farthest from the back. Boom! So you know, you also need to be able to be aware that you don't have a lot of blocking capability. That's going to be the challenge. Your blocking capability is going to be everything. If you don't have good blocking capability, 
You're fucked. I mean, I got a shipping failure. You're fucked. You go back to the hospital, possibly the morgue. Now we go to the good shit, right? Okay, technically it's not good shit. It's just more plausible shit. Unless whoever's planning on kidnapping you has been watching this video. And then you're fucked. So your hands are in front now. You still aren't going to do this. Go back and watch it. You'll see my balance is off. It's not off by much, but it's a hell of a lot off. You're also not going to do this. Okay, you're not doing that shit. This still throws your balance off. The only time you should do any of those two kicks and the three kicks that I showed previous, which is those two plus a tornado. We're not doing that because my leg hurts. But um, the only time you should ever do any of that shit, they're finishing kicks. They're movie specialty kicks, but in real life, they're finishing kicks. You more than likely will probably never get the chance to use them anyway, other than in the movies or training in your backyard. Let's keep the shit real. A lot of people that y'all follow don't tell you that shit because they're collecting followers. I'm giving you truth and knowledge. So it doesn't matter if you don't want to follow me. If you want the truth, I'm that guy. If you want to go get fucked up, keep following people who may have never been in an actual street fight. I've never fought professionally, but I've been fighting in the streets since I was six. Take that for what it is. So let's go with your blocks. All right. So your hands are tied together. You have to teach them to work together. High right, medium right, medium with me, low. High left, medium left, medium with me, low. Those four things are there. You can also probably do the circle or the wave. You know, those are things that we're not going to go into because I'm not trying to be out here all night trying to explain why you wave this way and wave that way. But there are also blocks. So, you know, if you block high, boom. You block high again, boom. You know, you, every time you block, you are prepared to strike immediately because your fucking hands are tied. Now, if he's throwing mad punches at you, boom, 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 that explains the way. Boom, boom. Boom, boom. Now that wave's a straight line, but your hands are tied. So where this hand goes, you make this hand follow. Where this hand goes, you make this hand follow. Boom, 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 boom. So you're waving and you're waving. So it's basically a wave. You also need to understand footwork. So I'm stepping in a triangle motion. He's throwing a left kick. Boom. There's that medium left. Uh, it's my right, but it's a medium block here. I can also do it with a knee in case he's going for a chest kick or a head kick. Boom, high, medium, medium with knee. So in case you haven't understood what the medium knee is for, the medium knee is for those who are in Thai fighting or American kickboxing because they are always teach you you have knees. You know, now, they don't teach you how to fight with your hands tied, but they do teach you how to use your knees effectively. So if you can block and push, you can drive a knee into that person. Block. Boom, you can drive a knee into that person. Therefore, this simulates that with that block. Boom, you understand? So boom, you're blocking. He's throwing a kick that's gonna go here. Say you are weak and tired, you still have this option. Boom, so you're blocking with three appendages. Now what you gotta make sure that you do is don't let him follow through. Because if he kicks and your block fails, he's got this leg. If he's got that leg, you're going to the ground. So you need to be prepared to get up immediately. Unless he breaks your fucking leg. That's gonna be a problem, all right? So you wanna make sure that in your blocks, you are prepared. Also, this is a rope. You are armed. Understand, the first thing you need to do in any fighting situation is to remain completely calm. I know, I know. I don't think I can do that. You'll be surprised at what you can do when you have no choice, all right? You'll be surprised at how this thing here became the thing that saves you versus the thing that hinders you. Blah, boom, wrap it around his neck, fling him through, or wrap it around his neck and push him to the ground. You've blocked his kick, boom. You can strike him with it, it's a knot, so you can hit him in his rib, you know? My arms are short, so I don't recommend me doing that. If I'm gonna block him, I'm gonna drive this knee into him, and then I'm gonna elbow him in his spine. Then I'm going to get behind him, and I'm going to put this thing under his neck. And I'm going to stop when he stops. When he stops moving, he's done. Hopefully he's not playing possum. But I'm not going to let him get up. I'll take the thing off of him, but I'm a little bit more brutal 
I will not tell you what I'm going to do to him because I don't want my live band, but I will just say this. B-R-O-K-E-N-N-E-C-K. -E Hopefully y'all can spell that. But it involves this. I'm finishing this shit. He's gonna wish that I um, unalived him, but I'm gonna make sure that he doesn't ever do anything else to me because I'm 50 years old and I'm not gonna be playing with him. I'm going to make sure I end it permanently. I'll deal with the cops when they get there. He's not gonna be D-E-A-D, -E but he'll probably wish he was when he wakes up and he has no functionality as he's a paraplegic, all right? Remember, if you um, take out the breath for a long enough time, you also unfortunately can do brain damage to a person because if you take away too much oxygen, the brain ceases to function. I'm not here to teach you that. I'm just giving you that as a warning. You know, there are, there are some things, as I said at the beginning of this video, a thousand things can go wrong before one thing goes right. And you need to be prepared for that because you can accidentally hurt your training partner and you don't want to hurt your training partner. Training is training. Fighting is fighting. Some of the things I have showed you tonight could be considered lethal ordinance. The trick is I got to get through your defenses the same way you got to get through mine. So if I'm not a really good fighter. I just want to escape. That's my job so I can get home. That's also your job. If you haven't been fighting since you were six years old, don't try to be a fucking hero. You know, do enough damage so that you can escape. Now again, this high right, medium right, medium down here with the knee, these are all protective blocks, you know, and depending on what side of their body is coming at you, you can use this rope. If he's throwing a straight jab, don't try to Jackie Chan this shit, you know, try to block and rot. It can be done, but if you haven't been trained to do that, you don't want to do that. You want to block, push it off, and come in. So if he's doing karate, you have to guard your right and your left, all right? Because he's throwing a karate punch, which most of the time will come from the left and then the right because it's like traditional boxing. If he's doing Wing Chun, he'll stand in a southpaw stand and extend the right first. So boom, boom. Yeah, because you can catch his hand. Then you want to take out a rib because of how he'll be standing. This is a wind chunk stance. This is a wind chunk stance, okay? So if he's throwing a punch to this side of my face, you know, I can block it. I can pull and I can throw a kick into him Taekwondo style, or I can block it and kick him wing chunk style, or I can do this. I can block it, boom, boom, and save myself a step. All right, so a lot of people don't understand the tiny differences between karate, kenpo, and kung fu. They're really, really minded. However, kenpo does teach more pressure point based stuff. I thank you for whoever did that. This is not a gift channel, please don't do that. I thank you, but yeah, please give that to someone more worthy of it and I will never be able to get that thing off of here because I don't know how to do any of that stuff because I'm stupid. But thank you, I greatly appreciate it. I honestly truly do. But um, back to the thing, if you're blocking here, if you can grab it right, if you're grabbing it here, if your ranch is here, you can pull him. So you're pulling. If you have your hands tied, you can hold it, pull him. So you're pulling him towards you. Boom! You know, your target is right here. You're going all ribs, especially if you're short like me. If you're a little taller, you can put your leg under his throat and just hold him there until he casts it out. The problem is, he has another arm, another leg, and another leg. So you have to live in reality of, I got him, but do I really have him? So you need to move faster. So screw that holding your foot under his neck Taekwondo crack. Grab him, pull, kick. After you kick him, if you're still holding him, that's good. You can try to break his arm if you want. But once you hear and hear, you can let him go because momentum's probably gonna take him down. When he goes down, you have one job. Get out, or if you choose to engage, you want to sit on top of him and put this rope on his neck. So you'll be on him like this, pushing down. You want to try to collapse his windpipe without collapsing his windpipe. So once he stops moving, get the hell off of him. If you have to give him mouth to mouth to bring him back, do that. But you want to probably want to immobilize him and you also remember you're tied up. So, you know. There's, there's gonna be some conflicts of interest in your brain at the time. So the best thing I can tell you is the first thing I can tell you. Get out. 
You got him down? Go. Do not engage. After you get him down, get the hell out of here. Now, if you've been in a lot of fights, okay. Your decision to do whatever the hell you want to do, just remember the actions have consequences. Hello, little Robin. Sorry, there's a bird over there. I always respect the animals. So, except for that shit that that dog did right there. You know, so, if you're going to get him down, you want to keep him out as well as down. But in the event that you have to worry about um, going to jail, you kind of just want to get him down and then you want to get out. You can always call the cops when you get home, which is highly recommended. You can tell them exactly where you were. And um, more than likely, you're not going to see it on my things because these are perfectly made so that they don't bruise me. A lot of people bruise easy. So when the cops show up, you can show them that your hands were wrapped. So he's like, look, to do, I got all these bruises on my hand. You know, is that they, if they can see that your hands have been bruised, it puts a little bit more validity to your story. Because um, in Virginia, self-defense is a hard case to prove. So you kind of got to, if, if you're not bruised up and if you like totally destroyed the other guy, it's going to be a little bit of a, um, a tiff in court. And the reason why I say that is I have a family friend who um, he went to, to, to lock up because he unalived the guy who followed him from a club to his house. Now, the fight was over by all good lawyers. The fight was over. When dude left the club, the other dude came looking for trouble. Obviously, my friend's lawyer didn't think about that during the court trial, which is why my friend got a little bit of time behind the shit. But, um, yeah, if I leave the situation, if we're fighting in my backyard and I roll the fuck out, brother, I laid you out, or brother, I just left you standing there and I walked away, I avoided trouble. But if you come to me after that, yo, know, that, that shit's on you. What happens after that, I shouldn't be held responsible if you decided to get stupid. So yeah, when you incapacitate your opponent, and I use the word incapacitate for a reason, that's a hell of a lot safer than you unaliving your opponent. However, one more time, a thousand things can go wrong in a fight before one thing goes right. So um, I'm gonna end this live real quick, but before I do, um, if there's any natives in the building, um, I will be deciding between now and the weekend if I'm going to make a specific video that I talked about so that the pretendians can shut the hell up because they don't have this, which actual natives have. So that being said, thank you guys for watching. I appreciate you, especially you who gave me the gift. If there's a way that you can take it back, please do that. I don't know how to give it back to you, but um, I, I don't do gifts because I don't want problems with the IRS and I don't know how to actually spend it. And there are people who are a little bit less fortunate than me. So um, I'll say this because I know there's a vet watching me on Instagram right now. And he's a vet. I'm a vet. And there are other vets. I talked to some vets today. Um, homeless vets and vets who are unaliving themselves at an accelerated rate from um, military trauma. If you can find a place to give that, that would be better. Because... I technically am homeless, but I'm not homeless. I don't have my own home, but I have a roof over my head. But there are vets who are in worse shape than me. I had some issues. I went to the VA. I got some help. So if you could donate anything to them, that would be a hell of a lot better and much more appreciated because they need it more than me. I literally do fight depression every day. I literally... Thank God for cosplay and other things to keep me occupied and it helps me out. And I won't be able to use your gift because I don't know how to get it off of TikTok. And I don't know how to give it to someone more deserving. I do not deserve your gifts. I really just want friendship and fame. That's it. The fame will bring the money. So, and also, my Scarlet Spider fan film, we got to finish filming today. So I start editing in two Tuesdays from now, which will be July the 2nd. So once that's done, I will post it up on my YouTube channel. My YouTube channel is called Kung Fu Happen Number 2. They'll be watching all of this stuff as soon as I end the live and go post it. But um, to everyone, thank you. You mean the world to me, and I greatly appreciate you. I don't always get to go live because the weather, the weather here in Virginia has been tripping since freaking damn April.
which is why I haven't really been able to do stuff. I did a night show the other night here. I will probably do more night shows as the summer winds down because there won't be any kids here. Um, that same night I did the night show, by the way, there were deer out here the entire time. And somehow I didn't see them. So that was a blessing. Anyway, thank you guys for watching. This is Kung Fu Epic number two. Stage name Echo Fang Grey Wolf for you here on TikTok and for you here on Instagram, but you probably already know that. That's what that EFG means. Anyway, thank you guys for watching. Um, down with the pretendians. Thank you guys for watching. And now we gotta in that, in that, move that, undo that. Um, I wanted to say thank you guys also to the 417 of you. There may be more of you. There may be more of you. But until I actually post the video and check to the 417 of you beautiful people, thank you. And yes, you did see me ask people to not give me gifts. I wanted to make sure y'all knew that. You know, I don't want anybody ever sending me money. You know, if you're going to spend money, you can spend money when I go to the actual movies. When my career takes off, you can spend money there. I will hopefully have that happen before I hit 56, since I turned 51 in a couple of months. But I want you guys to understand, I am not trying to hustle anybody. I do my YouTubes and my TikToks because I'm an actor and I want to be noticed. I don't want anybody to have to pay money for the shit that I do. Alright? Now, while I have you here, um, I'm going to get some information off my tablet. And I'm either going to do it tomorrow or a month from now. Tomorrow looks like it might work because my boss won't be at work because we're closed. But I'm still going to work because that's what I get paid to do. Um, I may do it from there. But I want to um, I want to do an important video about the suffering of natives before they got the right to vote. And when they were not legally allowed to leave the um, reservation. My next video here is going to explain that. So thank you guys for watching. Be seeing you. That was a spider.